The advent of coronavirus and the quarantines therefore brought upon in the United States introduced many new elements and transformed many aspects of everyday life. This includes a restriction on mobility, a mandate to maintain a safe distance from other humans, so on and so forth. These measures were created with the intention of providing the most utility for society. However, one problem that has arisen is the problem of domestic violence. Starting from the quarantine, there has been a statistically significant increase in the volume of cases related to domestic violence. For clarity, domestic violence, as here defined, is a blanket term used to describe any and all abuse in a household, including but not limited to child abuse, the abuse of spouses or persons of romantic interest, the abuse of elderly in a household, so on and so forth. Through this project, we claim that beyond a reasonable doubt, the increase in domestic violence cases after the institution of quarantine is not merely correlation, but rather causation. We also seek to illustrate how the quarantine has caused previously existing instances of domestic violence to exacerbate and how isolation has provided conditions for a worsening of domestic violence. There are two theories as to what caused the rise of domestic abuse cases during the pandemic in the US. The first theory is that high stress that occurred during quarantine and the pandemic led to more domestic abuse. This high stress can be caused by multiple different economic and psychological effects of quarantine, like the loss of jobs, the sudden change in routine, and the inability to relieve stress. 20.6 million jobs being lost and unemployment rate reaching 14.8%. This economic effect had a huge impact on stress, especially for low socioeconomic families. In the case for low socioeconomic families, the pandemic exacerbated issues that had existed before, like the hardships of paying for rent, utilities, and groceries, ultimately increasing financial stress for those who have to provide for their families. Research shows that these stress levels are often a major predictor of physical abuse and neglect, especially towards children. Child psychologist Dr. Yo Jackson, the associate director of the Child Maltreatment Solutions Network at Penn State, said stress parents may be more likely to respond to their children's anxious behaviors and demands in aggressive or abusive ways. The financial high stress due to the unemployment and economic hardships of the pandemic contributed to the increase of domestic abuse cases. Not only did unemployment and financial hardships cause high stress, but the effects of quarantine itself also caused an increase in stress levels. In the U.S., most of the states had stay-at-home orders, or quarantine, between mid-March and early April, all the way to May and some even in the beginning of June. One of the most obvious effects of quarantine is a sudden force of change in daily routines like going to work or school or actually any other activities. Sudden changes in routine and lifestyle, especially those that weren't planned or wanted, can lead to adjustment disorders, post-traumatic stress, confusion, depression, and anger. Adjustment disorders and stress due to change situations can't be relieved by accepting the changes over a course of few months. However, due to the constant changes of the COVID pandemic and the quarantine restrictions, adjustment disorders and high stress is not released as efficiently, and these increased stress levels in the home can be a predictor for domestic abuse. Lastly, the financial and adjustment stress compounds and festers within people due to the inability to relieve stress through hobbies or meeting others. Due to the stay-at-home orders, People were unable to do hobbies that they may have been able to do pre-pandemic and were barred from meeting other people. Socialization impacts our stress levels because it increases the release of hormones that decrease anxiety levels, directs our energy outward, and distracts us from our current circumstances. The benefits of socialization ensure that the stress does not compound to an excessive extent and gives us an escape from hardships. But while in quarantine, the exact opposite occurred because people weren't allowed to socialize as much. Another way that people relieve stress is by doing hobbies, but akin to how socialization was hindered with quarantine, some hobbies that need to be done outdoors or our collective activities were banned. With all the hindrances caused by quarantine on actions of stress relief, the previously mentioned stresses are exacerbated. 
And compounding stress can lead to people lashing out in these quarantines with them, and therefore increased levels of stress lead to more cases of domestic abuse. People have been asked to stay home due to COVID, either by mandatory lockdowns or voluntary restrictions. However, this order played a role in intensifying physical and sexual abuse, mostly by intimate partners. UN women stated that the pandemic has created conditions for abuse that are ideal for abusers because it forced people into a lockdown. The places or people from which victims of domestic abusers could get help from are all closed, and victims have to be trapped at home with abusers. Since the victims next to the abusers would be kept monitored by abusers, they are unable to signal for helplines. Children are especially vulnerable to abuse during COVID-19. Support systems such as schools, teachers, school counselors, religious groups are no longer available, and children are unable to reach out for help. The sign of abuse cannot be found, since children cannot go to school. In addition, many at-risk families, especially families with low income, may not have access to the technology needed to stay connected with friends and extended family. Perpetrators also use fear and viruses as a means to prevent victims from telling others. Abusers do not let others in the house and instill fear in victims that if they leave, they will spread the virus to their families, harming them and their families. An anonymous questionnaire requesting experiences with domestic violence was completed by a random distribution of the general population of the United States of America and was implicitly conducted by the National Domestic Abuse Hotline involving thousands of responses. This questionnaire provided a set of data that allowed us to extrapolate to other conclusions, such as the fact that out of all hotline calls, 35% were new cases, a sharp rise from the 19% of new cases from the preceding year. Therefore, this relationship implies a correlation between a rise in domestic violence and quarantine. In conclusion, we have so far discussed the deeply rooted causes of domestic violence and the unique conditions the pandemic has provided. These unique conditions make it so that domestic violence is more likely to be perpetrated. For instance, in quarantine, victims and perpetrators alike are required to stay with each other in enclosed spaces for days, even weeks at a time. Also, the quarantine has increased stress and anxiety in general, making it so that it is more likely for perpetrators to snap against their victims. The question is, what can we do about it? For the application, the most obvious thing would be raising awareness on domestic abuse itself. Hence, why we are making video, but there are other applications we can do to help reduce the number of domestic violence, especially during this pandemic. COVID has certainly brought many new elements and challenges to our life. Many businesses, work, schools, etc. were at stake, and people were unsure how to deal with all the changes that happened so suddenly and quickly. Reliable information for these new viruses was vital for the public, and that meant it was a great time for fake news and propaganda as well. The World Health Organization has raised seriousness of this situation. We are not just fighting a pandemic, we are fighting an infodemic. Like the research has shown, accusers use this misinformation to justify their arguments and cause fear to victims. It was shown that they use fear to stop victims from meeting others and asking for help. Therefore, combating misinformation about pandemics on social platforms and other sources would help accusers from misinformation to create fear in victims. In the case of Korea, the calls for reporting domestic abuse have been decreased during the pandemic. However, just because victims didn't report a case to state institutions doesn't mean that there hasn't been an increase of domestic abuse. While other countries are actively delivering messages to respond to domestic abuse or report it at the national level, Korea has been only sending messages to restrict people from going outside due to COVID-19. Therefore, much more effort should be made to provide counseling and support for victims. The effort is needed to devise various support systems and means to prevent social distancing principles from leading to social isolation for victims. 
Based on our research, analysis of data, and literature, we came up with three recommendations that connect with our theories. The first recommendation is a provision of monetary assistance to families in low socioeconomic class. L children in low socioeconomic households are three times more likely to be abused and seven times more likely to be neglected compared to other children. In addition, it has been found that increasing the number of children in poverty from 10 to 15 percent would increase the number of victims of maltreatment by 22 percent. This implies that increasing the number of children in poverty would increase the number of children likely to face domestic abuse. And this could work the other way around. By decreasing the number of children in poverty, there will be less cases of domestic abuse. Therefore, if monetary assistance is given to low socioeconomic households, there will be fewer children in poverty, causing a decline in child maltreatment reports. Another way to dampen the impact of domestic violence is the existence of a government program that allows for the temporary use of sites such as vacant hotel rooms to house victims of domestic violence if necessary. In lieu of a recommendation provided by the Public Interest Law Center given to the Secretary of State for Housing, Com Communities, and Local Government, we also recommend that funding for this should be allocated from other portions of the federal budget. However, we do recognize the financial constraints of this approach, but think it is a minor expense of the trillions of debt expended in the current fiscal year. From this research on this increase of domestic abuse during quarantine, we came up with three further questions that we would like to research next time. The first question is, what can be done to reduce the cases of alcohol-related domestic violence? Quarantine has pushed alcohol consumption into residential settings and increased alcohol consumption everywhere. Studies have shown that as alcohol consumption increased, 911 calls reporting domestic abuse increased, as well as the strength of relationship between alcohol consumption and domestic violence more than doubled since March 2020. To prevent the increase of alcohol-related domestic abuse, alcohol could be banned, but this may lead to deaths or more violence from alcohol withdrawal. Health issues occurring from boot boot like alcohol and more employment and eco economic stress, especially for those working in the alcohol industries of bars. Therefore, we would like to know the best ways to reduce alcohol-related domestic abuse without causing more harm. The second further question is, why have there been discrepancies in the number of domestic abuse hotline calls in different locations? For different locations within America, there were discrepancies in the number of hotline calls. For some locations, the numbers have increased because of more violence, like the Los Angeles Police Department having tripled the number of calls in May 2020 compared to May 2019. On the other hand, the Family Unit of Philadelphia Legal Assistance saw a 54% decrease in the number of domestic violence hotline calls, which they believe is because those who are in the most danger are unable to reach out. We wonder why some locations have an increased number of calls while others have had a decrease of calls. The last question is, how might solutions by country vary, for instance, South Korea? For different countries, there were different measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19, like how America went into complete lockdown while Korea moved schools online and limited public meetings. Due to these different measures, the solutions may vary, like how giving vacant hotel rooms in South Korea won't have much of a big difference because South Korea didn't have a complete lockdown, leading to victims being completely trapped in their homes with their abusers. So next time, we would like to investigate how solutions would vary by each country, especially in South Korea.